So now we're going to continue with summation notation. I gave it to you that way, and you're going to try to answer it using either the arithmetic sequences or the geometric sequences. Now, since I see here this looks geometric, so since it looks geometric because you're multiplying, by the way, if you look here and here, these are arithmetic. So when you're taking it to a power, geometric, because when you take it to a power, it means multiply. When it's linear and you're multiplying, it really means you're adding, 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 or subtracting, and that's arithmetic. Okay? So first thing I'm going to do is I see that it's an infinite geometric sequence. So because I know that it's an infinite geometric sequence, I'm going to use the formula for that. I'm going to go back to the page that has all those formulas. And I have, since I see here, there's the arithmetic uh, sum formula and the geometric. This one is finite, which means like first 30 terms. This is infinite. Now, I can only use this infinite sequence when my ratio is less than 1. So let's go back to that page, make sure my ratio is less than 1. This is what my ratio is, so I'm good. So I'm going to write down that formula. The sum of the infinite is a sub 1 over 1 minus r. Now, I tricked you a little bit because in order to get the first term, you're going to have to plug 1 in for n. So I'm going to have to go 3 times 1 fourth to the 1. 1 fourth to the first power is 1 fourth times 3 is 3 fourths. So my first term is 3 fourths over 1 minus my ratio, which is 1 fourth. Now, before I continue with that, I want to back up. If this same question said 3, 1 fourth to the n minus 1, that looks like more like the geometric formula if you look right here. So then I know automatically this is my first term. If you're not sure, plug in 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1 times 3 is that. Okay? So 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. 3 fourths divided by 3 fourths is 1, or your calculator will tell you that. Okay? So that means the sum of the infinite geometric sequence is 1. Okay? Now let's look at the next one. The next one is very similar, but the difference is instead of it being infinite, it's finite. So we'll look, go back and look at the formula for the finite. The way I remember it is, it's the same thing as the infinite, but then this time it's 1 minus r to the n. And everything else is exactly the same. So I plug in n for 1, and we know that it's 3 fourths from the previous problem. We know the ratio is 1 fourth from the previous problem. We know that our n is 9. So 1 minus 4, right, 1 minus 1 fourth to the ninth power. Okay, I should have put out that in parentheses. I didn't do that very well, so let me do that better. Now I'm going to pick up my calculator. Honestly, I already know that 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. 3 fourths divided by 3 fourths is 1. So I'm just going to plug this into my calculator. So I'll turn it on. 1 minus control divide for my fraction, 1 fourth. to the ninth power, okay? And I get that big old fraction there. That means the sum of the first nine numbers of this geometric sequence is that. I can define it, okay? Now, I want to acknowledge the words converge and diverge a little bit more because I don't think they were addressed very well. I can do these problems. So if I ask, do they converge or diverge, you would write they converge because the ratio is less than 1 and the ratio is 1 fourth, okay? So if I ask you that question, does it converge or diverge, I don't need you to actually give me the answer. I just need to know if I can do it, okay? Let's go to the next one. When you look at the next problem, I need to decide if it's arithmetic or geometric. This is a linear function, so it's arithmetic. As soon as I know it's arithmetic and it's sum, I'm going to go back to that sum formula, And I'm going to use this one to get the answer. Okay. So I'm going to go S sub N equals, I remember the N over 2, first guy plus the last guy. 
So what I'm asking for is the sum of the first 15 numbers. So I got that. That's 15 over 2. To get the value of the first number, I'm going to plug 1 in for there. So I'm going to go 2 times 1, which is 2. I like this one better because if you remember doing the previous page, let me try to get to that a little bit quicker. Remember when we had to get that last term and we had to do all that work to get it? That's because we didn't have a formula. But now, we actually have a formula. The formula is 2K. So I can just go 2 times 15 now, which is 30. So my last term is 30. Okay, so I took the 15, I plugged it in for K, and that's how I got the 30. 2 plus uh, 30 is 32, divided by 2 is 16, so I'm just going to go 16 times 15 in my calculator. Oops, let's try and multiply that right. And I get 240. So the sum of the first 15 numbers is 240. Now, I, don't, I wouldn't ask you if that converges or diverges, because that's only for a geometric well, sequence. Sandra Scott, please meet your okay. mom at the attendance office. Again, Sandra Scott, please meet your mom at the attendance office. Thank you. Okay. This problem is exactly the same. We know that it's an arithmetic sequence. What I think you should do now is try this problem yourself and see if you can do it. I'll rewrite the formula because the more I write down the formula, the more I learn the formula. Okay. So I'm asking for the sum of the first 15 numbers, but this time my arithmetic sequence is a little bit different. So the sum of the first 15 numbers. I like this one better because in order to get my first term, I just plug one in. 2 times 1 minus 1 is 1, so that's my first term. To get my 15th term, I plug in 15, and I get 29, so then I get plug in 29 here. 1 plus 29 is 30, 30 divided by 2 is uh, 16. That's weird, it ended up being the exact same thing, I feel like something happened. Nope, we're good. And so 16 times 15, which we established, is 2, wait a minute, just kidding, 29 plus 1 is 30, divided by 2 is 15, 15 times 15 is 225, that's the sum of the first 15 numbers. Make sure that when you're doing this problem, you tell me that it's the sum of the first 15 numbers, okay? Let's go to the next one. Number 5 looks very similar to number 1. It's an infinite geometric sequence because it's taken to a power, and so you feel like you should do this but then you got to be careful. The ratio is greater than 1. There is no sum because 5 is greater than 1. It diverges. So let me say that again. You couldn't do this one because the ratio is greater than 1. And it wouldn't make sense anyways because if you see exponentially, it's going to get bigger and bigger. You're adding positive numbers. But if you went 1 minus 5, you'd get a negative number. So that doesn't even make sense. Okay? In number 6. Now, number 6 also has a ratio greater than 1, but it's finite. If it's finite, I can add a list of numbers that get bigger and bigger and give you a really, really big number. It's if it's infinite, I can't do that. So I will use not the infinite formula, the finite formula, which is above which is similar, 1 minus r, a sub 1, 1 minus r to the n, okay? So I find the ratio. The ratio is 3. Remember, I can do this ratio being greater than 1 because there's an n to it. If there isn't an end, I can't do it if the ratio is greater than 1. If it's less than 1, we did fine. We can find an end, okay? So to get the first term, I'm going to plug 1. Notice I use the letter I. It doesn't mean it's imaginary. It just means I use the letter I. So I'm going to take a 1, and I'm going to plug that in. So I'm going to go 3 to the 1 minus 1, which is 3 to the 0, which is 1, times 1 minus my ratio to the 10th over 1 minus 3. And then I'm just going to plug that into my calculator. Okay. I know 1 minus 3 is negative 2, and I know that there's a 1 there, so I don't need it. So I'm just going to go 1 minus 3 to the 10th over negative 2. And my answer is 29524. 29524.
24. So the sum of the first 10 numbers is 29,524. Okay. This is the end of the unit. So you need to make sure that all the other videos you've been